Hi guys, hi everyone, welcome back to my kitchen and channel. So today I am going to show you how I make my version of beef pies or meat pies. I'll be using minced beef today. You can substitute that beef for minced chicken. I will do a minced chicken pie another time when I have that chicken. But for now I have the minced beef. So I'm going to show you how I put this together. These are the ingredients that will be going into my beef. I'll show you that in a sec. I just want to get that dough started. So I have here four cups of flour. And I have my, well, this is for my egg wash. I'm going to use that egg for my egg wash. I'm going to use the butter for the dough and the salt. So I'm going to cut up this butter very fine in small cubes and put the flour and butter in my processor. Or you can mix it with your hands, it's up to you, with cold water. And then I have here uh, my ingredients for my beef pies. So I'll explain that when I'm going to do the beef. But for now, let's put this flour and butter and salt together. It has to go into the food processor to do like a fine bread crumbs. Um, don't let the butter mash up uh, too much or process too much with the flour in the food processor because you want a little chunk in it. I will explain um, when I'm doing the beef. I'll explain the rest. So let's get started. This is what your butter, you have to cut your butter up in little cubes. And this is what you're going to be using. So we're going to add some half of the flour, two cups, because it's four cups. So two by two and half and half. And the salt, same thing, half and half. So. So I did half for you in the fruit processor and you see it was a bit sticky so when it's like this consistency all you need to do is keep adding the flour like about a tablespoon flour in at a time from the top until it comes to um, a nice consistency for a dough but as it is here it's on the sticky side let me give you that closer closer look it is on the sticky side so I still have my half, my other two cups of flour. So now I am going to mix with my hands. I just wanted to give you that idea what, how to go about it in the food processor. And when you're done, you will have a nice um, dough, a nice consistency with that butter and flour and salt and dough. But I'm going to do the other half here now to show you guys. And then I will mix the two together, right? To show you guys so we will go in with our flour here our rest of flour and the rest of our salt and the butter so I just I'm leaving this little bit of butter just for the end and I'm going to go in with my hands for this. If you don't like the feel of the stickiness of the dough, feel free to put a gloves on and use it so that you won't get your hands or whoever has their nails get dirty. So we're just going to mix to 
get it all together. Now our sticky dough picked up some flour, so that's fine. That has a nice consistency now. I just want the rest of butter to coat with this flour. And then we'll take the two dough balls or the two doughs and put them together. Now let me just get my rest of water. Whenever you're doing this kind of um, flaky pastry, you need to always work, work with cold water. And when you're doing it in the food processor, and you make sure your water is in ice. Really, really cold and nice. And you can always drop in a few ice blocks as well in your food processor. So your dough will remain really cold because when I'm finished with this dough, it has to go into the fridge for 30 minutes. Just to set to get back that cold hard texture and you don't want your dough too soft and you do not want to over mix your dough so now we will pull everything together just hold it and squeeze it together this dough is very similar to when I'm making the Jamaican beef patties or the empanadas as well too. Same cup amount of flour, four cups. Just the ingredients is a bit different. Same amount of salt. Same amount of water. The only difference with the Jamaican beef patty is with the dough you're going to be adding some turmeric or some curry powder in it for that yellow color. That gives that Jamaican be fatty that um, yellow color. And for my um, empanadas, cooking is going to be used with a little bit of brown sugar that's the difference with the dough but it's same amount of flour to salt now we can pull the dough together because it is in one now and you can see those itty bitty piece of butter right that is what you're looking for and your dough is cold always work with cold flour as well too this dough has to split into two divide into two and roll out with a, a rolling pin and that's all there is to it when you finish take some butter just tap that butter on top of it and at the bottom of it that's why i left those couple pieces to use at the end because I'm going to be you can put it in a ziploc bag or I have my um, plastic bags that I have that I use that I cut down and I use so in goes my dough in the bag and that why that is why I left those pieces of butter so it will not stick so just drop it in there and this will go into the refrigerator for 30 minutes. Let it go all the way to the bottom of the bag. There we go. And that's it. Not it. Put it in the fridge just to chill back a little bit and I'll show you the next step in the meantime I'll put the beef together and show you guys so for the minced beef part I have here the minced beef it's I usually rinse out my minced beef and put it in a fine strainer and let it uh, dry out or drain out I added one tablespoon of regular green seasoning I will attach that link to the description box as well too 
And here I have my onions, one onion finely minced in my mini chopper. I have here two bunches of celery, finely minced as well in my mini chopper. I have here one red sweet pepper or bell pepper, diced. I have two pimentos did in the mini chopper as well too. I have some papers, this is optional and I use a lot of fine time in my minced beef whenever I'm doing filling. I have to just um, strip out the leaves from it and this egg is for my egg wash for the pastry after. So let's get moving to the stove. In my heated pan or pot, very little bit of oil because you know beef lets out, it's a very fatty meat so it lets out its own oil and just coat the pot with that oil. In goes my onions. We're going to let that saute up for a little bit. Let it start to let out its juices and dry up. We have to keep that beef or that meat. You can substitute the beef for me, uh, chicken or fish. Good now, and in goes our pepper, our pimento pepper, our fine thyme. Give it a mix. Now this version of meat is how I will normally do it for pastels. Pastel pie, which is baked in one dish, or smaller pastels, which is all, which is you can do it in the fig leaf, individual little ones. Wrap them up in the fig leaf, put it to steam. And in goes my celery. Everything is finely done in the mini chopper or you can do it in the food processor as well too. Have your heat on high. If you want it on the spicy side, you can add some cayenne peppers, some chili pepper. But if you don't want it too, too spicy, the pimento peppers will do the trick. If you don't have access to fresh peppers, some pepper sauce, one teaspoon of pepper sauce will do. Here is where it will start to let out a little liquid. Have your heat on a little high. Last, I will add in my capers. That will give it a little salty taste. After I add that capers and mix it, I'll taste it to know if it needs that extra little bit of salt, which I doubt. For the beef pies or chicken pies or fish pies, what people usually do, they boil like one potato and they will peel it and they will mash it up and add the mashed potato to the meat mixture. That potato will, they say, bind it or hold it together in the pies, in the little pastry pies. But a little trick is if you don't want it like me. My opinion, 
is I don't want it with that potato taste. So what I will do, I have a little bit of seasoned breadcrumbs which I will put in and that will do that trick of binding it together. So there's no need to use a potato, it's up to you. So let it let out its juices and let it dry out. I will see the color that it looks like. If I want it a little on the more browner side, I will add just a very little touch of that soy sauce. So the liquid is drying out and you see how it's crumbly. Now when you put this just like this in your in your filling of anything, it is going to fall out on you when you bite it. So what I do is I add a little bit of seasoned breadcrumbs. As I said, it's a substitute for the potato. I don't want to be eating a potato pie. It's a, a meat pie that I want to be biting into. And that will bind it, it will hold it together when it's finished baking, it will hold together. And my capers will go in. So I will mix this. This is a filling for a pasta pie. This will be a filling for an empanada pie as well too, excluding the capers. In the empanada ones, all you have to do is add that curry powder to this. And in the Jamaican patty, same thing, a little curry powder. So give that taste that you're looking for in a Jamaican patty or in an empanada. And as I said, you can make this filling how spicy you want it by adding in the extra cayenne pepper or the chili powder so I'm going to give it a taste now because it is cooked and if you find it's a little crumbly still on you you can go ahead and add a little more of the breadcrumbs so it has a perfect taste I'm not going to add any additional salt I will just add a little bit of breadcrumbs again I will give you how much I used in the measurements. If you want to make a shepherd's pie or um, a pasta pie with minced meat, this is the way to do it. Like you boil your pasta and this is where you will add in your boiled pasta and mix it up. For that recipe, I used the Big Shells pasta. And it's a very delicious. As I said, you can substitute the beef for chicken or fish as well too. And now it will hold better because it's not so much crumbly like how it was. So, if you prefer this light color, that's fine. But I am going to add maybe a half a teaspoon of soy sauce just to give it a little brownish color or darkish color and that will give it a little extra taste as well too you're gonna let this cool completely before filling it in anything because you don't want your dough to get soggy with the heat so I'm going to turn off my stove. It is with a little moisture, but um, once it cools down, it will get a little on the thick side and dry side. So I'm going to move it out here and let it cool completely before I start with the dough. So our dough is chilled nicely 
and what we will do now is cut the bag to get our dough going. We're going to sprinkle our surface with flour and we're going to turn out the dough from the bag onto the surface. Sprinkle with that flour again. Handle your dough gently. Don't be afraid to use that flour. We're going to separate our dough into two. And we're going to keep one dough in the freezer just to keep it on the chill side. And we're going to work with our half of dough here. So we just need to finish it here. Form it into that dough ball here. And we're going to work it with our rolling pin. Dust our rolling pin. And we're going to gently roll it out. Now if you want to cut it in four and work with smaller doors, that's fine. It doesn't matter if you roll it out into a circle or into a square, it's going to be cut anyways. And you see all that buttery pieces. And just roll it out thin. Because you don't want a fat pastry. And the colder your dough is, the better it is. It's very workable. For me, I always like working with a colder dough. And that's it. So all we need to do is, I am going to use a inside of um, one of those mason jars to cut my circles because I don't want a too big, big pie. We're going to get a circle. I'm going to keep cutting them out. This is what you're going to get. A nice circle. So let me do one and show you guys what it would look like. And I will do the rest and show you when I'm finished. If you have anything with a pattern on top as well too and you want to use it, feel free. You will just get a different shape, but that's fine. So, let me show you guys how to assemble this. I'm just going to cut out a few more and show you all. Make sure you have your cookie sheet or whatever pan you are going to be using to bake it in, buttered. Also, if you want to use a pizza tray to do this on, that's fine. It's going to be better as well too. I'm just cutting out a few to show you guys. There we go. All your scraps, you're gonna form it into one dough last. And you're gonna get a small spoon or a tablespoon. We're going to have our beef at the side. And we're going to use a tablespoon so we will get an exact measurement. 
just fill it up, press it in, clean out the side, and put it right in the middle of it. If you want to use a half tablespoon, that's fine. You're going to take your other half, place it on the top, flatten the beef a little bit, and we're going to stick the ends. If you want to keep this inside to keep it a full circle, that's fine. So just flatten it and press the edges. You're going to have something with a small flat end. And we're just going to, or you can use this side, it doesn't matter. We're just going to press it right around. It will give it a little pattern as well too. And this is going to be our pie. So let me do the rest and I will show you guys. And all the pieces that remain back, you're going to form it into that dough ball again. Roll it out. And keep cutting out your circles. appetizers or like orders for the desserts it can use for breakfast or when you're feeling to eat a little snack to munch on and keep doing it again so let me show you guys again I will zoom it in Put one, fill one, put one. When you make the holes, you're going to take a fork as well too and just do that to the top. 
that's just for the steam to come through. We're going to line them up in our pan. So I'm going to do the rest and I'll show you. And when you're finished with all of them, just give it that egg wash. Start up with one egg and brush the top of your pastry. And put it in the oven. Start up with 350. It's not going to take too long to, to bake. And you're just going to bake it until it's golden brown to the top. Maybe about 30, 25 to 30 minutes. So let me finish all this, put it into the oven. I'll show you in between 